Right, let's start with the card then, our first project from Eclectic Mix. And it's lovely because I've got all this stuff in front of me. I remember when I first started scrapbooking and Kay and Company were a massive brand at the time and used to buy a box kit with an album in and all the papers and all the bits of embellishments. And this kind of reminds me of this, but kind of a step on from that. So I want to just talk you through my thought process and how I came to create this project. So I printed off just on regular um, cardstock, two of the papers out of the six that are on there. So this could be on rice paper if you wanted to do it as a canvas, you could print it on fabric. If you wanted to do that, it's entirely up to you. So I chose these two because, well, all of them work together. But these two for me jumped out. I really liked the way that we've laid these out. So using those two pieces of paper, so those are what we're going to start with. Then I got a piece of our Mylar, our 12 by 12 Mylar, and I cut out the stencils. So I just want to show you what I did with those in Canvas Workspace, because I, when you bring the stencil up, they're grouped together. So I want to take it into canvas and just show you how I created the large stencil. All right, so back to the scan and cut then. We're gonna go into, we're already in dress mannequin because that was the one that I showed you at the beginning. We're gonna go into stencils and we've got the Harlequin and we're just gonna set that on the mat. So we've got that and then we're going to add and we're gonna go back into the USB. Now US, your USB will look different to mine. Mine's just a blank USB that we put the files on. Yours will be an, an official one. So you'll get a proper one. Um, but because I save a lot of files onto mine, I wanted to just have them put onto a USB. So back into stencils again, and we're gonna add the script on there as well. Okay, so we're gonna press okay. And we're gonna save those into the cloud. If you're working on a non-Wi-Fi enabled machine, so a CM300 or a CM600, you'll just plug your USB into your computer and import the files that way. So because I've already got Canvas Workspace open, I'm going to go to my projects. And there are my projects right there. Okay, so you can see I can move these independently of each other, but the whole thing is grouped together. So I can't, if I was going to just cut that out from the scan and cut, that's what I would end up with, but I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is edit and ungroup them. Because even though once you've grouped something on your scan and cut, you can't then ungroup it. If you take it into canvas, as long as you haven't divided it, which makes it one piece, then you can ungroup it. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of that outside edge because I don't want to be limited by that size. And then I'm just going to drag a box around to all of those go back up to edit and regroup it together. So now that's gonna cut into my Mylar and I'm not gonna be restricted by a tight border around the outside. You can still resize it, still do all the fun bits with it, but I just thought this was a good thing to show you. Now this is a script stencil. So again, I'm gonna edit and ungroup and you can see all the different pieces in this one. Click on that square and just delete that off. So I'll do it in the bin on the screen. And then I'm gonna drag a box around all that, go back to edit and group it. And then I'm gonna make that slightly smaller because I'm working on a card. I don't want my stencil to be too big. I want the script to kind of sink into the background a little bit. So then I'm gonna bring this over here. Now, when you're cutting Mylar on your scan and cut, if you're working on an SDX, I want you to cut it with the cut um, amount at one millimeter. So our Mylar is perfectly weighted and the perfect thickness to cut in one pass on your scan and cut. You need to make sure that your mat's really nice and sticky. So like it would be for cutting gray board. And then you're gonna put this on and the cut amount on one mil means that it will cut through in one pass. What you'll find with plastic is because there's no fibers in it to stick to the mat for the mat to grip onto, sometimes your mylar wants to move. So that's why you need a really sticky mat. The other thing is sometimes when it goes back, if it does a second cut, so if you've got it on a lower cut amount, it might not cut in exactly the right place because of the plastic wanting to move on a moving platform, it can be a fraction of a millimeter out, but it ruins your stencil. So making sure that you've got a really sticky mat, put your mylar on, 
put your cut and just keep your cut pressure on auto but take your cut amount to one millimeter that means it will cut it in one pass and it's a really clean finish to it so that's why I've done that so that's the stencil that we're then going to use so I decided I wanted to make an 8x8 card because it's a quite a nice size and it's also a nice size for a scrapbook page too so if 12 by 12 is too overwhelming for you just think about doing a scrapbook page at 8 by 8 and just think of it as a card front okay there's nothing to be scared of and what I loved about this paper in particular was this shadow that we've got underneath here just almost creates that layer it looks dimensional already it looks like this is knocked back a little bit and you've got all these different layers that they've built up within these papers which is super so from the other paper I then did some fussy cutting it's not very often I sit down with a pair of scissors and do some fussy cutting but I actually really enjoyed it um, and I just sat and cut out the corner so if I just bring back in the papers that we've used this is the one that I've cut this out of and I've also cut this bottom section here as well and then there was a little extra piece of eucalyptus somewhere that looks like it's probably still in my um still in my box at home but never mind because it's here anyway so it doesn't matter so I've taken these little pieces away okay so this is where I'm going to start with and then we'll see where we get to so the first thing I want to do is stick this lighter piece so when we bring it if I just bring in back in that paper again sorry I'm going to do this a few times but I want you to see how it all came together um this piece on here when I printed it on a lighter weight paper this one is faded out it's not that slightly compared to the color in this one so this one I'm going to put completely flat because I want it to look like it's part of the original paper so we're now designing our own which is great so I'm going to use my book binding glue and I'm going to stick this down first so I love this glue because as you will know because I say it every time I do a class it's got a very low water content it dries nice and quickly but it does give you a little bit of wiggle room and it's a water-based um, glue so it's re it's just a really good glue to have in your stash it's made for book binding which as you can imagine it needs to be quite a specialized glue for that really because you don't want the pages in old books to start warping and buckling that would be a disaster so it's a really really good um a good glue to use and I use it all the time so I'm just going to pop this into this corner like so and just make sure that it's nice and lined up and then just give that a nice firm press down so it looks like it's meant to be there it looks like it's always been there you will get a slight shadow because you put a layer on top but I quite like that right so the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm just going to ink around this edge okay and then I'm um, just adding some depth and dimension in because the, the craft card is the only card that I've actually used that isn't a pattern paper. So because we're putting pattern on pattern on pattern, we need to think a little bit more about how we break those layers down. So I'm going to start just with a little bit of brown ink. I'm using Verse Fine Claire and I'm using Fallen Leaves. And I'm using Fallen Leaves because it's quite, it's almost a mix between a warm grey and a brown which just gives you a really nice vintage feel i didn't want to go for black because black will be too harsh and i just wanted something that complemented the colors that are in the paper itself so that's why i've gone for that color but you can use whatever you've got in your stash okay this is about me just giving you some ideas and you then taking those ideas or not whichever you prefer and running with it and doing your own thing and I'd be really interested to see what you all do with this USB because it's not a specific right this project you make this this is about you getting into your crafty mindset putting your spin on it and adding your style which for me is really important because you can admire people's work and I admire a lot of people's work in the in our industry there are some phenomenal designers and crafters out there but you have to put your own spin on it otherwise it's not yours and I think that's really important which is what I try to do I remember um, watching Tim Holtz a lot 
when I first when he first came onto the scene and thinking, wow, I'd love to be able to do that. And I did it and it looked great, but it wasn't mine. And that was the moment when I was like, okay, we need to just change this up a little bit now and make sure that we're we're doing our own thing with it. Right, so I've got a little bit of ink on there now. I'm just gonna take the same ink pad and I'm just gonna run it around the edge of this piece of craft card. And I'm literally just gonna run across the edge. Now, don't do that with your with your pad straight like that. Make sure that your pad's flat because card, you know when you get a paper cut, it hurts. Card is gonna cut into that ink pad. So try and keep your ink pad as flat as you can, like so, and just run across the edge. And I'm doing this just to create almost like a frame around the edge. And you might be sitting there thinking, yes, Mel, we know this. We've been doing this for years. I know that, but there's always new people. So I'm going to pop this onto here like this. So I've got a little bit of a frame going around here, a little bit of distress going on, but not too much. OK, so I'm going to stick this down onto here. Right, so let's just get a little bit of glue on here. Now, you don't, you're not wallpapering when you're sticking this down, okay? You just need a little bit of glue around the outside edge. You don't need to waste half a bottle. You just a small amount all the way around the outside edge and then a little bit, and I mean a little bit, you can hardly see it in the middle. So let's position this. And I prefer using a wet glue for matting and layering because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Right, so we've got our basics of where we're heading with this bit. So the other thing that I'm going to do is also stick this onto here, but I'm going to lift it up slightly. So right now what I'm doing is just looking out where I've got all my layers, what's going to lay over the top, what's going to go underneath. So I took another piece of the paper with the card, a postcard on, and I'm going to push, put that on there, but I want this lifted slightly off the page. So I know that I'm not necessarily going to stencil on there, although I could do. Let's see how, what we feel like. Right, so stencil. Now, I would normally use Cadence Stencil Spray, but just as we go, because we're just going on here, I thought, you know what, we'll just go for it. So I'm going to position my Harlequin stencil at the top like that and I am just going to tape it down if I've got some tape with me which I have which is good for me I always think I'm really well organized when I come in here and then within 10 minutes I realize I've forgotten something so a little bit of tape down there now that's not holding the card in place it's just holding the stencil and what that does is create a hinge so if I lift my stencil to see where I'm at I can just then drop it back down so I'm bringing in frayed burlap and I want this very, very subtle in the background. And again, I've picked out a colour. If I just bring this ink in, you can see how it reflects the colours in this hummingbird here. This would be more vintage photo and I didn't want that yellowy tone to it. So I've gone for frayed burlap and I'm just going to use a blending brush again. And I'm just very lightly, whoop, that's a lot of ink. So take some off on your mylar at the side. And then just very lightly, I'm just going to go in here. And I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'm just going to pick up a little bit more ink. And I'm just going to go over here. And it doesn't look like there's a lot more here where I put the ink down first. So I'm just going to add a lot more over here to make that dark a bit fit in. So if you ever do that, if you ever just put your brush down and think, oh, that's way too dark, just balance it out. It doesn't matter as long as you balance it out. If you've only got one thing that's really dark and everything else is really pale, that one thing is going to stand out. So we just knock it back so that it, it works and it fits in. And I'm just literally just going to go over here like this. Right, let's lift it and see what we've got. Yep, there's a little bit there. I want a little bit more ink down that middle bit because I want that to stand out a little bit more. So now I've gauged how dark I want this to be. I can then go back in. Remember, you can add it, but you can't take it away. Okay. So I've now got this lovely Harlequin just in that background, which instantly adds to that whole thing. It just adds a little bit more texture onto there. Right. So let's get this piece in next. Now, because this is kind of a postcard, I actually think it would be quite nice if we did a little bit of stenciling on here. 
So if I, let's see if we can do this over here. Let's have a look, let's see what we've got. Because this is literally, I planned kind of the design, but then I wanted to really show you how this fits in. So if I do this here, and I put my tape up there, this is me thinking on my feet now. So <laughs> welcome to my world. If I then slide this piece underneath here and line it up, so actually what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape on here as well, just to hold this into place. Because I've just had an idea. So if I hold this, it's good that the idea has come to me about lunchtime on the 12th today, 12th of September. Good grief, I don't know where that's gone. Because normally I have them at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. So this is quite good for me. Right, let's pick a little bit more ink up. I'm going to use that Mylar. And I'm just going to go in and add some script. Because it's a postcard, you'd have script on it. So why not? So by doing this bit, I've got the postcard bit that I've cut out at the top underneath. So that's what I'm stenciling now. But then I can just move that one to a little bit darker, actually. Let's have a look, see what we've got now. Just keep lifting it up and having a look. Yeah, I might want to add in a little bit of this ink on this one, just because it's a little bit darker. And I want to just get away from that yellowy colour. So I'm just going to add in a little bit of this as well. And obviously you could do this with your cadence paints, but for this project I wanted you to just see that, you know, just using a subtle ink in the background works really well. Right, so I've now got that as better. I'm happier with that. So I'm going to now just lift this out. Try and keep that where it was, Melanie. There you go. And then just continue this down here. So I'm going to go underneath that bit. I could have left that there if I wanted to, but it will create a little bit of a ridge on your stencil because of the thickness of the card. So just think about that as you're doing it. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of that darker ink just to make that pop. Right, I need a little bit more across his tummy, like that, for now. And I'm just going to add a little bit of darker here, just so it looks like that postcard is just casting a bit of a shadow. So I'll just do that bit. Right, let's have a look what we've got. That's better. Right, so that's the inking for this bit done, I think. Let's see where we get to next, because then we can decide whether we need any more or not. So this piece I've just inked. I'm going to go around the edge of this as well. Because we're putting a layer of pattern on pattern on pattern now, this is how we're really going to separate those layers. Now you could do it with matte, matte layers and you know pieces of card, but actually just a little bit of ink around the edge. A, saves your card. B, doesn't make your card really heavy to post or bulky to post and it just separates those edges and it's the subtlest little thing but once you've done it if you then don't do it you'll know so it's one of those once you've once you've done it once you want to keep doing this because it does make a big difference and it's worth it you know if you're just adding that extra little element of detail in it will just make it pop a little bit more so back in here like that. Right, I'm going to put this on some foam tape. So let's just put those lids back on there. And I've just got a one mil foam tape. So one mil foam tape is the depth of it. I would say this is probably about eight or nine mil wide, but the depth of it is really shallow. Okay, so I'm just using a shallow foam. And I just want to do that because I only want to just lift it off. I don't want it too bulky because we don't know what else we're going to add on yet. Because I thought this was a good way if you just... <laughs> I'm saying it now and I'm laughing before I'm even saying it. Um, a good way of you getting in my head, which might be a little bit scary for you. But I do like to just go through the thought process of how I put something together because, you know, people did it with me before. You know, I've watched people and thought, you know what, that's a great idea. So there's no point having this knowledge if you don't share it, because that's boring. So the more the merrier. Right, let me just get that backing off there. That's the beginning of the roll, so it's got some blue 
sticky tape on it. There we go. Not done bad there for me. It's quite good for me. Right. So a little bit of wet glue, just because I am good at getting things straight. I love symmetry and I love straight lines, but I don't often do it first time round. So we'll give ourselves a little bit more wiggle room. So let's bring this piece back in now and I'm just going to position this in the corner like that. So now you've all you've already got the drop shadow on your paper at the background, but that's creating a little bit more. So you can see now we're starting to lift. And I like the way that that script goes right the way through. That really works for me. I like that idea. Right, so the next piece that we're going to put on is this. Well, actually, we're going to do this bit next, I think, because I need to work logically for this. So these two pieces are flourishes. So on your USB, on the dress mannequin, you've got wings, you've got flourishes, you've got all sorts of really pretty stuff. Now you can imagine, just looking at that, you can imagine straight away what you can start to make. You could have frames made out of this. You could have that as a frame and that as the side, that at the bottom, this at the side. And remember, if you divide these, should be able to then weld all these pieces together so you've got load I mean just with this one folder you've got loads and loads of options which is really exciting so I'm going to bring this back in and I'm going to have this just hug, hooked onto the corner of here like this okay so I'm just going to position that I'm going to use it the wrong way around okay I'm going to use it as a corner piece so I am going to go in and add a little bit of ink just to knock back the cleanliness of that craft card because it is a super quality this one it's Anne Marie designs and it's very very nice card in fact everybody that uses it when they come on classes or retreats or come to the academy or whatever if we use this they're all like oh where's this craft card from <laughs> and we do sell it actually which is good so you could have it that way if you wanted to, but I wanted to do something different. And these little curly cues here just cried out for being tucked behind there like that. So I'm gonna glue this down and I'm gonna glue it down flat. And then we're gonna go in and cut away the bits that we don't need. And this will be lovely on a scrapbook page as a frame. It would be lovely on a canvas, it would be fabulous on a bag. If you wanted to do it in rice paper, you know, think about that because the scan and cut will cut rice paper for you. So think about that as well, which is super cool. I don't think I've found much that it doesn't like. Yes, my lovely Andrew and May has just gone jelly. Why on earth would you want to cut jelly on the scan and cut, Andrew? You definitely need to go on holiday. <laughs> You're coming up with ideas like that, pal. Right, let's press that down. Oh, have you noticed my new little um, my new little bracelet? My Alice made it on a loom band last night in about five seconds flat. So I promised her I'd wear it today. I'll have to take it off when we get painty and messy though. Otherwise she won't be happy with that. Right, and then I've got another one, exactly the same, that I'm gonna hook onto this corner here. Okay, so now I've stuck this down because I haven't thought about what I'm gonna do. So I'm just gonna position that so it looks like it's hooked over there and that will do so let's have a look about there so i'm looking at this angle now here i'm making sure that i'm going to line this up in the same position or a similar position like that because i don't want i need that to be opposite there otherwise it'll drive me crazy right let's get some glue on this and this is the thing you know this could be your project and it could look completely different to mine. You might want to shabby up the edges. You might want to add more paint. You might want to just, you know, make it your own. But to have a digital library of cutting files is invaluable. And more and more and more, you know, people are going to digital crafting rather than buying dyes. And there's a place for everything. I have to say there is a place for everything. I don't think dye cutting will ever die out. And I don't think digital crafting will ever die out because it's, you know, it's it's horses for courses, I guess, isn't it? It's what you like. Right, so I've stuck this one down. And at this time, I'm going to go in and just add a little bit of, bit of ink. Now it's stuck down because that will also add a little bit of shading 
onto my background paper as well. Okay, so let's pop a little bit of that on there. Right, now then, to cut, now that, you see, could now go onto a bigger piece of card and that could be a scrapbook page. So you could leave these pieces on if you wanted to, get a piece of 12 by 12 to go behind it and that's the beginning of your scrapbook page. But we're not doing that, so we're gonna turn this over. Always turn your work over when you're cutting bits away because you can see it clearly. If I try and do it like that, I can't see exactly where I'm cutting. If I turn it over and cut it from behind because I've got the edge of the card base, if you like, I can cut to that. So it just makes it much easier. And it's just little hints and tips like that that make the difference. Because we craft to enjoy ourselves and relax and be a bit more mindful. We don't craft to get stressed out about stuff, do we? So, and then I've got all these little pieces so you could extend this if you wanted to. But for now, I'm just going to move those out of the way. Right, so we've got our corners. We've got our stenciling done and we've started to build up our layers. So now this one, I'm going to glue onto here, but I am going to add some foam tape onto the back of this because I want to lift this slightly too. So I'm going to use the same depth as we used before. And I'm just going to put a little bit around here. Now I printed this on a 140 GSM just because I didn't want that white edge when I started cutting into it, but you can do it in whatever weight you want to. It's up to you. I just have a thing about white edges. I'm not good at them. I don't like them unless they're there for a purpose. So a little bit of this just in here and try not to stretch this tape when you're sticking it down. So try not to pull it as you, as you pull it down because if you do, what will happen, it will buckle your paper slightly and we don't want that. Right, so let's get this off here. And here we go. And then I'm going to stick this down flat and then I'm just going to curl those extra little pieces here. So I'm going to add a little bit of movement into here just by using my tweezers and my scissors and just curling that eucalyptus slightly like that. And then just curving some of these leaves as well. Okay, so let's get this main bit stuck down first and then we can deal with the other bits because that's going to have lost its sticky onto my hands by the time I get to the rest of it. So wet glue onto here like that, making sure that your corners lined up perfectly, that's important. Then I'm going to take my pin flare glue gel and I'm going to lift this up. So remember, we've curved this slightly, but we haven't got any glue behind it. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that so that can lift over there slightly. I'm going to add a little bit on the back of the leaves here, like that, and another little bit here, like that. So I've got some height now, which is, which is working, which I like. Right, so the main part of this is this mannequin. So when you cut the mannequin, you get two different shapes. You get this, move this out of the way, then you can see it better. You get the solid mannequin and then you get the, almost like the wire bit that would go over the top, which I think is really stylish. I like this a lot. And you've got it on this stand. You could cut the stand across there if you wanted to and create a rectangle with a rectangle inside it so that you could cut several layers and stand that up if you wanted to do a 3D project. But for this, we're just gonna stick with our paper and our card. So I took one of the mannequins and I cut the whole thing out of that patterned paper, okay, which you're not gonna see very much. And I stuck it onto a piece of craft card just to give it some rigidity. I then cut the detail one, but snipped away the little curly cues here and here. So it looks like a dress form, okay? And then I'm gonna pop that on top of there like that. So I've got my stand plane and I've got my dress form there. And I'm just gonna see if I've got a brown pen in here. And I bet I haven't because I need one. I won't have it, will I? I'm sure I've seen that somewhere this morning. Okay, never mind, we'll do without, we can manage without it. Right, so what I would, was going to do is go in with a fine liner and just draw inside there, but I can do it a different way. 
So I'm going to turn over the detailed one and I'm going to pick up quite a lot of this ink and I'm going to rub it down in between those areas there in the hope that when I turn it over, I've got a little bit of depth down there, which I have, which is good. In fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a smaller brush so I can get right in. So not from the front, because then you're going to ruin the paper, but from the back, just pushing that ink into those apertures, if you like, into those recesses, will just add a little bit of depth, I hope, to the front. So get yourself a different array, you know, a few different stencil brushes because it's always worth having them. You can pick them up really quite inexpensively now. And they just give you the option to be able to go really detailed, do bigger areas. And to be honest, it does really doesn't matter which brand you get. They're all pretty much a muchness. And then I'm just going to pick up the rest of that ink and just go around the edge of this now just to add a little bit of a frame again, because we've got pattern going on pattern here. So we need to just separate those edges out again. You could tie a little bow around the middle if you wanted to, it's entirely up to you. And then I'm just gonna go in and very gently, just work with what ink that's left on the brush and just add a little bit of detail into there. Okay, and then I'm gonna continue that ink down the stand across the bottom like that and then just around the edges of this you're not really going to see the base of this so i'm not too worried about that right let's just have a little bit of a quick clean up because i know what i'm like with ink and i'll end up with a big smudge somewhere that i don't want it so i've started using being really good and just using a damp cloth but when we're in here, it's a little bit easier just to use wet wipes, which aren't my favourite things in the world, but they do the job. But normally, I would just have a damp cloth. Right, let's get rid of that. Clean all that up. I'm just working on a sheet of Mylar. I know I did some filming a couple of weeks ago and somebody emailed in, uh, messaged Sins and said, can you tell me what Mel had on her desk? It's just an A3, no, A1, A2, A2, A1, one or the other. It's a big piece of my lar anyway, <laughs> whatever size it is. And I just like working on this, especially when we get to do messy stuff with paint. Right, so we'll bring this back in. So what we're gonna do now is stick this onto here and that's going to go on there like that. Okay, so now we can see that it's lifting off slightly. It's not lifting off too much. I want it to all kind of, I don't want one thing to be the most prominent piece of this. I want it to kind of look more like a collage. Hence the ink rather than the matte layers, etc., etc. So it's like you've got all these lovely goodies and you just get to sit and play. But like I said, when we first brought this out, Unfortunately, we didn't have the option to do any education with it. And I know people said they needed a starting point. So I thought, you know what, we'll bring it back. Those of you that have already got it, brilliant, because now you'll have some education to go with it and it won't cost you anything, which is great. We've also done some different colorways for some of the um, charisma on there or reflections, whatever you prefer to call it. Um, so you've got some different colorways that you can purchase and download. So it gives it another lease of life, I guess. But I would love to see what you're gonna do with it because I think everybody will come up with something slightly different. And then a little bit at the front like this. And we'll just add a little bit more ink just around those edges, just with what's left on my brush. And then I'm gonna position this on there like that. So I think what we'll do is we will keep the stand flat and then we'll just push that back slightly and pull this forward slightly so that when that stands there, I might have it tucked behind those leaves as well. The stand's flat, but this is slightly off. So let's use wet glue for this. like that and then I'll use some glue gel on the back 
So let's pop this on here. Not too much because you, you don't want that um, stand to sprain. So I'm just going to move this over here a little bit like that. Right, so I'm happy with that. I've got that in place. Now the other thing I did was I cut out, see if I can bring my paper back in for you. I cut out just this succulent and this lovely, I would say probably a peony at the bottom. It's stunning flower, whatever it is. It's lovely. And that I'm going to use to cover up all the workings. Okay, so we go from that where there's a lot of busyness round here because you've got swirls, overlapping swirls. And just by adding that over the top, just makes it look a little bit cleaner, I guess. Tidier, which if you saw the state of my craft room the other day, yeah, tidy wasn't even in its vocabulary. I've been paint pouring. Oh, it's so lovely. I love it. It's so exciting because you never know what you're going to get. Right, so I've now got that over the top of there. So we've added that extra texture on there. And then the only other thing that I want to add on to here is this hummingbird. So I literally cut it out of the piece of paper. I just thought this was really pretty and it adds a little bit more height. So what I'm going to do with this is go around the edges with that gathered twigs again. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of colour into this hummingbird just so that we can separate it out a little bit. So I'm just going to go around here and do this and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to just snip into these wings. So all I'm doing is literally holding my hand flat and then just going in with my scissors and just cutting nice and fine. You don't want this really chunky, just nice and fine lines up. So we're getting a little bit of, you can see how that paper's starting to curl now, like the feathers on the wing. So just take your time with this and you can see I'm using my hand to place my scissors on top of. So I'm not doing this in midair and hoping, I'm using my hand as a rest and then just opening and closing the blade of those scissors. And it does make a difference. It's worth doing it. If you don't like it, don't do it. But if you do, have a go, because it's super easy. This, resting the scissors on your hands helps a lot, I have to say. If you don't do that, it's a bit more tricky. And then I'm just going to do a few here as well on the top wing or the one that's at the further back. Just a few little cuts, like so, just to add a little bit of movement into those wings, like that. And then maybe I'll leave in a little bit on the tail feather as well down here. So it's as much or as little as you want it to be. And all we've used so far is a couple of SVG cutting files, the stencils, which are on there. So you're not having to rummage around and find stencils that will work with all these files because you've got stencils on there as well, which is great. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of shape into here, just with my scissors. Like that. You could use a ball tool, but to be honest, it's really not necessary. And then I'm going to bring this back in. I'm going to position that so I'm laying it over the same place that the hummingbird is on there. And then I'm going to use my glue gel for this. So I'm going to get plenty of glue gel behind here. I'm going to put glue gel down here, but not where we've gone over the um, with the cuts. And then the tiniest amount just on his beak, like that, because that's the bit that if it gets handled will be the weakest. So the beak can just go across there like that. Just going to lift that off slightly like that. There we go. So that is our first, oh no, I've got something else. I forgot about this bit. So it was a little bit ooh la la for me. So there is a um, an Eiffel Tower on the USB, which is fabulous. So I just wanted to add in the word Paris at the bottom because when I was 30, my husband took me as a surprise to Paris and he told me two days before that we were staying in a log cabin in Wales. And so I knew we were going somewhere. So I packed my suitcase accordingly. And then an hour before the taxi was due to arrive to take us to the airport, he actually told me we were going to Paris. So the suitcase got emptied 
and repacked. <laughs> I was like, brilliant, Mick. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise. I said, I know, but I need to know what to take with me, don't I? Anyway, we had the best weekend. It was fabulous. We ended up, it was, he was mortified, but it was the best weekend, honestly, because um, we, we checked into this hotel called Hotel Vagram. So we came, got off the airport, managed to get to the hotel, um, and we were walked in and there was just a spiral staircase and a reception desk. So we went up and we checked in. I said, can you tell me where the lift is? No lift. I was like, okay. So there were, I think there were 98 stairs on a spiral staircase up to our room. <laughs> and I said, is there a dining room? No dining room. I was like, okay. So it was a bit like Vaulty Towers. I'm not going to lie. You open the wardrobe door and it nearly fell off, but it was the best weekend ever. We just literally walked from one cafe to the next and one place to the next. And it was, yeah, it was a bit, bit of magic. So I'm going to do, it's our 25th wedding anniversary in tw two years time. So I'm doing a whole album that he doesn't know about. So this is going to go on my Paris page. Which I thought was quite cute. So I'm going to pop that onto there like so. So all I've done is cut out the matte layer of the Paris and then the letters out of the paper. So I scanned in the paper. This is the paper that has, let me bring it in and show you, this paper. Scanned it in, positioned the letters where I wanted it to cut out of them and then glued it back together. So I cut the letters out of a thin paper, but also out of the craft card, just to give it a little bit more stability. I'm just gonna get rid of some of that glue, because although it dries clear, if you can avoid it, avoid it. It's one of those things, I don't think that S is the right way around. I think it needs to go that way. There we go, that's better. Wonky S. There we go. So we've then got Paris. So again, a little bit of ink just around those edges, just to finish that off. So you don't have to use all the files from one project. You can use them as you wish. And I'm just going to position that on there. So I've got this little bit here going on with the succulent, which is about there. So I'm going to position that in the same place. There we go. And then we've got our first card done. So if you're a card maker and you're thinking, I don't really do mixed media mail, I'm not into paint and stuff, absolutely this USB is still for you. But if you are into your mixed media, then you're going to want to watch the next two classes because they're a little bit special. So there you go. There's your first project. Lovely card. You've got the corners in there. You've got a little bit of height and depth in there. We've cut into the papers. We've added the stencils in. And then last but by no means least, just put Paris at the bottom there. And then our lovely winged, in fact, if I lift it up this way, you'll be able to see the depth and dimension that we've got. There you go, look. So you can see it's not too thick, still go in a normal envelope, still go through the post. But I just think that was, I just thought that was a really pretty card to start with. So thank you for joining me. I'm gonna clear up. <laughs> Then we're going to get messy. So we'll see you in a little while. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.